Hello and welcome to another VCV tutorial here with me Bo from Bo Beats and in this video we are going to talk about modulations. So if you are new to the VCV software it's a freeware Eurorack emulation or Eurorack software and it's really interesting and it's definitely worth your time and, and your efforts and if you don't know where to start out I have two other videos on this really nice software and I'll leave links down in the description if you want to check them out first. There's an overview video with some cool examples and there's also a beginner tutorial. So if you want to you should go and check that out. So today we are talking about modulations. Modulation can be different things and we'll take a look at some of the more standard stuff and perhaps even get into some more experimental territory. So we have a basic patch set up here in VCV and I'm playing it from my key step. And what you can see here is that we have the MIDI device, the VCO, going into VCA, going into the VCF, the filter. And then we have an ADSR that controls the, the envelope of, um, of the VCA. And basically that's our kind of first modulation. What it does is basically it modulates how the VCA behaves. So it goes from the output of the ADSR into the exp input of the VCA here and it modulates the, yeah, basically the amplitude of the sound. So if we increase the decay and sustain you're probably, probably very familiar with this if you've, you know, if you've tried your way around a synthesizer. We get a more drawn out sound. So what you could say is that the ADSR manipulates the VCA and how long the sound will be, how drawn out or how snappy the attack will be. If we increase the attack here, you'll hear that it becomes a more, a short, um, a longer attack, not a shorter attack. It's so that's a kind of a modulation that we got going on here. But let's, let's move on to one of the more basic modulations. So there's a lot of different sources from which you can modulate something. So if we click here, you'll see that these are all the available, uh, all the available units here. And um, what we'll go for is another ADSR. So basically any ADSR is kind of an envelope or envelope, envelope, envelope generator. And you can use this to shape the sound of the frequency or the, the filter here. So this is what it sounds like at the moment. We hook up the ADSR here from the output to the frequency because it's the frequency of the filter that we basically, the, the cutoff of the filter that we want to impact. But as you can hear, it sounds pretty much the same and that's because there's no trigger, there's nothing triggering the ADSR, so it doesn't really know when to come into play. So what we can do here is we can use the gate input, basically from the MIDI, the MIDI input here from the key step. And in order to do that, I'll be using a utilities here, uh, or sorry, not a utilities, I'll be using a multiplier here, the multiplier. And instead of going from the gate here to, um, the ADSR will be going from from the gate to uh, the input here and it multiplies that input into different outputs. So now we have it connected down here to the gate of the ADSR. And suddenly we have a different character. Basically we have a longer, a little bit of an attack here, a decay and sustain. But if we pull the decay and sustain down And we pull the attack up here on the ADSR. You can start to hear how this will impact the sound if we turn it down. And of course we can use the frequency CV here to set it to, I do think it's positive and negative. So, so basically if we go in a negative, you hear that it, it starts closed and opens up. And if we go another way around, it starts open and it closes. And 
And this will of course have to do with how we set the ADSR here. So let's introduce more attack. This is a simple way is to introduce attack and have a pretty, you know, middle of the road AD or DSR here. And we can go in the negative here. You can hear it how it kind of slaps back. So it starts at a low frequency value and then you know, op I think the correct term is opens up. And this, of course, we can influence by the release and sustain and decay times. Suddenly, with a long release here, it takes, you know, it doesn't slap back. If we turn the release down a lot, so with a short release, the frequency basically goes back up here quicker. So using an ADSR to manipulate something has a lot to do with time. Here you have the attack, how fast something will be introduced. And the decay and sustain release has to do with for how long will it last. So that's very interesting as well. But there are of course other modulation sources that we can use. For example, there is an LFO. It can be a little bit hard to find, but we can find it here. The Tidal Modulator here. So the Tidal Modulator is sort of a standard, pretty standard LFO. And from this LFO, for example, we could introduce some pulse width modulation. So first let's switch from the tri to the square. And let's go from the uni here uh, into the PVM here. Still no pulse width modulation. Well, that's because we need to use the PVCV here. territory here. So we have the ADSR modulating the frequency, we have the LFO here modulating the pulse width, so it's all well and good. But what else can we do? Well, you can use sequencers as modulation sources. So let's bring in the sequencer here. This is the SEC3, and if we just, you know, it's turned on, you can see it's running and we can uh, decrease the speed a little bit. You actually, you actually increase the value to, to decrease the speed. Now, there's different things we can do. We can, for example, use the gate here as a modulation source. That will basically trigger something. So let me show you guys what I mean by that, how it can trigger something. Let's add a spring reverb, something which we can actually, I think, hear. So let's see here. Um, let's see here. So we go from the output from the VCF into the spring reverb here, and we go from the mix output into uh, the outputs. So there's nothing going on here. Let's see. Let's add some reverb. Now let's use, let's put down some dots here. More dots, put down the dots, and go from the gate to the, let's see here, the CV in here. We can remove some to make it more noticeable. As you hear, when the gate sends a value here, it triggers the the mix here or, or the the level of the the spring reverb here. So that's very interesting. Kind of on and off. No reverb. Triggers the reverb. 
Now, of course, there's different things we can do here as well. So that's using that's using the, the just the gate function kind of on and off. Now we can add some more here and we can go from the first row here and add a value. And this value here will correspond to, to the amount of a change to something. And you have to, you can see it from row one, that stuff is happening now on row one. So what else can we do here? Now we could, of course, we could do, for example, we could, could modulate, modulate the actual frequency here. So we'll go here to VC Oct here. And as you can see here, suddenly this little, little blinking dot up here, if you, check it. The blinking dot here moves slow, fast, slow, fast. So we can decrease some of the values here. Slow, fast, slow. So you can see how it moves. So let's listen to it. Of course, I'm, I'm over exaggerating now because I want to, to kind of show you what happens with the sound so whenever the second little second little dot here is passed it increases the frequency of the LFO basically the speed of the LFO a lot so that's what's happening now and we don't have to go overboard with it we can just turn it down a lot uh, and just keep it pretty low so let's listen to what we can do now I'm just making a little sequence here with the key step. And now while this sequence is running, I want to take the second row here and impact the attack. And the second row here to impact the release. So let's turn it, let's turn it down. And suddenly we have some interesting modulations going on here. We're modulating the reverb, we're modulating the ADSR with the sequencer, and the ADSR in turn modulates the VCF, and we have frequency modulation going on to the pulse width, but that's in turn modulated by the gate. Or not by the gate, by the first row here on the sequencer. So, as you can see, you can build up some pretty interesting sequences, even though that this one you're listening to now is kind of kind of over the top. And if we want to, you know, we can go even further. Let's multiply this. So we're going to the multiplier. We take row three here in here put it to the release again and we go to resonance so as you can see just using the sequencer both the gate values and the different sequencer lanes to manipulate a source it's really interesting and it really adds complexity to the sound and to the sequence but also using the adsr in different ways you can use the adsr to, to pitch you can use it to frequency you can use adsrs uh, with in, in conjunction with the lfo and so on so this is just something i want you to go and explore so guys if you enjoyed this little tutorial please hit that like button consider subscribing to the channel and if you want to you can head over to patreon.com slash bowbeats the links are in the description it's a great way to support my channel with a little donation every month so guys thank you so much for watching and i hope you have a super pleasant day. Thank you.